So hey y'all, I'm back with another video. So today's video is yet again another Chama Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we're gonna be doing another random opinions about random things. I really do appreciate that y'all love this series. Some of y'all have commented saying that you want these videos to be a little bit longer. So I will definitely try to get longer videos as well as put in more random opinions. Again, these are opinions and not facts. So please make sure that you're not out here getting mad over somebody's opinion. We can all respect each other's differences on this channel. Nonetheless, I always wanna hear some of y'all's random those opinions so leave them down below so without further ado let's get right into this video my first opinion is there should be no such thing as pet rent i understand paying a deposit to an apartment but to pay rent for your own pet to me is scamming the deposit makes sense because yes anything can happen in regards to damage from pets to the property or the unit but to pay rent on an animal that i take care of i pick up after i clean up after that's that capitalistic bs that is inflicted on consumers because i think about how unnecessary that expense is i'm already paying rent to a place that i'm also insuring the pet is my property but i have to pay for my little doggy to be here i feel like that's just capitalism and a way that big business has found more ways to get more money because i think it's very unnecessary to have to pay rent for your pet especially at the rates that a lot of these apartments and even private landlords charge you like if i'm paying rent on my pet i might just need to claim my pet as a dependent on my taxes because if i'm cashing out a few hundred dollars for a deposit and extra money each month just to have my canine friend live with me there should be some type of return on that some of these apartments and properties don't even offer certain amenities for pets but still want you to pay pet rent it's absurd the best advice i can say is try to save your money and buy a house so that you can make your own rules that's my next big girl step that i want to do but all in all i think it's unnecessary to charge people pet rent take the deposit and let it be that my next opinion is the show all american homecoming is probably the best show out for the teen and young adult demographic especially for black people i started watching season two the other day since it's now on netflix and i'm like wow this show is really good like they're doing a really good job at times it could be like a little cheesy but i think it's actually a good cheesy like something that is relatable to young people and the topics are relatable they do touch on real life situations they're showing hbcu culture and the cast is also very good with the range that they show of storylines and representation i know all american is a really popular show but i want it to get even more recognition because i feel like what they're doing is a lost art like back in the day i feel like you could watch shows that were relatable and particular for the teen demographic and even the young adult demographic and you had your black shows like the parkers moesha girlfriends proud family and even that's so raven but it's like that isn't really a thing anymore and the only show that still has that nostalgic and relatable feeling to it is all american and all american homecoming y'all can recommend me other like teen or coming of age types of shows or movies that pertain to the demographics of young black people because that's like really my favorite genre like coming of age i feel like when you're watching something that has a more positive influence and is actually practical in the lives of young black kids teens and adults you have more of a connection to the show i didn't go to an hbcu but watching a show like this makes me regret that i didn't even though i know i really wanted to also whatever happened to the show the quad i can't even remember if it was good or bad but at least it was something related to the black student experience also the main character simone hicks who was played by jeffrey hightower and the second main character damon sims who was played by peyton alex smith both went to HBCUs. Jeffrey went to Clark Atlanta and Peyton went to FAMU. So I think it's interesting that they get to play it all out on TV as well. I think All American Homecoming is a really good spinoff and I like how it reminds me of Degrassi but just more modern and specifically for black audiences and I hope to see more seasons of the show. My next opinion is Nicki Minaj and Ice Spice's collaboration was hard like literally 10 out of 10. Like it's been a while since I listened to a verse from a female rapper and said from start to finish it was hard. Nikki did her thing. Y'all can't even say that she didn't. I think this was Nikki's best verse in a long time, and I'm glad she snapped in the way that she did because I think people have been trying to tell Nikki that she can't keep up or she has to use others to stay relevant. And I think she just proved everybody wrong with that verse in particular, especially at the end where she was like, LOL, another bag for me. She let everybody know that hands down, she really does this ish for fun. It's easy for her, it's cake for her, and she's gonna get money regardless. She pretty much says what everybody says. However, her talent 
talent can always back it up. And even as far as Ice Spice, Ice Spice did her thing too. And I know there's been talks of Ice Spice saying that people have been using her flow now that she's really popular. I mean, yeah, I think she's definitely trend worthy and a little bit has rubbed off on others, but I don't think it's as prominent as she tried to make it seem. However, Ice Spice clearly just solidified her popularity with this collaboration with Nicki Minaj because the song was hard and the visuals were very enticing. Now, y'all know I don't believe that every single thing that you put out has to be overtly sexual. And I think there should be a switch up with this type of imagery that these rappers are putting out every so often. Like, just mix it up is all I ask. But for what it was, they did their thing. And I just knew that eventually the internet was gonna try and compare collaborations. People were talking about Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion's song WAP. People were talking about SZA and Doja Cat's collaboration to the remix of Kill Bill. And now people are trying to see who had the better collaboration. I think it's a little too early to tell with the song just dropping, but I'm not gonna lie, I did like the song WAP. Like even judging on the overt sexual scale, but also the song alone, I think Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion did their thing. But I gotta say, Nicki Minaj and Ice Spice, they killed it. I like their song best at this moment. I feel like a lot of female rappers just gotta put out music. That's all I wanna see. And I've been happy to see that Nicki has been more active. I'm actually pleased with this collaboration. And y'all know I'm a critic and I'm not sure if this is true, but they said that Ice Spice is now signed to Nicki Minaj. If this is true, I think that's a great business move for both of them. I mean, probably the best business move of this year when it comes to putting on a new artist and solidifying their career in the mainstream. People think Ice Spice is an industry plant. She very well may so be, but it's an industry plant that's actually growing faster and faster than a lot of others just by making the right business moves. I like the song. It's on replay. I'm pretty sure it'll be all over social media and I definitely think it's giving another banger for the summer. My next opinion is we need to retire the bending over and taking pulsing piping penis pose on Instagram. For example, this. I know this is random, but I call this the take D pose because why are you bent over showing the entire world how you take you know what? I'm just happy that there's a lot of y'all that tell me to just speak my truth and stop holding back and trying to be politically correct or just nicer about my opinions because I feel like I'm always gaslit for saying stuff like this, but it is ridiculous. I feel like the rapper Baby Mamas kind of started this pose and then everybody just copies what they do. And now it's like so many girls are just bent over on Instagram, literally showing how they take pulsing piping penis. And it's to the point where I had to have a conversation with the girls in my modeling agency like, I better not see you on Instagram with this pose. We're about to to have new model intake soon and this time around I'm looking deeply at social media because it got us into some hot water last summer. Last summer I had one model pose in a very off-putting way basically in this pose and it was just even more raunchy and one of my sponsors literally chewed my ass out about it and we lost our summer trip simply because of social media and what was so hurtful was that the model never apologized she never took the post down and she basically got cut from the team that very same week and we were left with a deficit in finishing our model season for the summer and all of the girls who didn't participate in that didn't get to go on a whole trip just because of somebody else's actions who ended up just not being on the team anyway. I'm going to go on a tangent but I'm sick and tired of the bend over and show your booty pose. It's honestly just completely distasteful. There's things on the internet that are sexy, that are super sexy, that are raunchy, then overtly sexual, and then downright slut-like and I feel like this is one of them. I know that's super judgmental coming from another woman but I'm just sick and tired of seeing it. If you ask me it's pretty much soft porn but it's too much of a trend and I've seen a lot of girls bent over like this and I just wish that women just had a little bit more class at least publicly on the internet. My next opinion is I think referring to somebody as a victim or survivor is kind of subjective. I feel like people can be victims and that is okay to say. There is this new terminology of referring to somebody who has gone through something traumatic as a survivor and as much as I agree and understand why that term is what it is I still think that referring to somebody as a victim isn't a bad thing. I feel like utilizing the word survivor is fine but it also comes with the notion that said person is completely healed or completely at peace with whatever they have gone through and some people just aren't there yet. I think it kind of comes from this societal ideology of either not wanting to victim shame somebody or even discrediting people who are victims so people don't like to use that word anymore but if you are on the opposing side of a crime or something unfortunate technically you are a victim. Some people have corrected me in my videos saying that I should refer to people as survivors of assault 
assault or whatever. But as much as they are survivors, they're still victims as well. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. I don't think being called a victim makes you look weak or uneasy. I just think it is what it is. And I think it actually takes some time before somebody goes from a victim to a survivor because it's not just what you say, it's all of the steps that said person had to take to get to a point where they feel better about whatever they've been through. My next opinion is, I actually see no issue with the movie Woman is King. And I know this is super unpopular, especially because I do touch on race and colorism and the showcase of black women, especially in the media. But I actually got a chance to watch the movie finally and I thought it was great. And I'm a critic of everything and mainly an entertainment critic. And I actually usually don't like movies as much because you have about an hour and a half to convince me that the story or whatever is interesting and has a good conclusion. And in a lot of movies that just doesn't happen. But I thought the Woman is King movie was very conclusive. The storyline was beautiful. The acting was good. Even for the African accent that usually in Hollywood sounds horrible, I could stomach the ones in this movie. I do think the title is what makes people equate black women and in this case, dark skinned black women to a more masculine look or showmanship. But I think that's the point of the film. This is a spoiler alert. So definitely click off right now if you haven't watched it and don't want me to spoil it for you, you have been warned. But I think the point of the title actually correlates to the storyline. In the end of the movie, she is appointed as king and of course they could have made her the queen. But I think because of the optics and the realm of royalty in those traditional African times, that's why they gave her that title. Being a king was the highest and the most revered title back in that time and she was worthy of that position even though she was a woman. I thought I was going to watch the movie and find all of these different examples of colorism or just black women being and perceived or showcased in a certain way. And of course it's here and there, but it doesn't really ruin the movie. It didn't make me feel that the movie didn't pertain to me or could relate to me or just entertain me all in all. I thought there was a lot of femininity that was shown in the movie due to the fact that the main character played by Viola Davis showed a lot of compassion, motherly instincts, perseverance, and her soft side was definitely shown throughout the movie. I felt like the times where she was in the water, that was her kind of relaxing and just showing that she is a woman who takes care of herself. I didn't expect the movie to be as good as it was and although I get why some people made the correlation to black women being portrayed in movies where we have to be aggressive or masculine, I think I can make an exception for this one because I think overall that wasn't the main focus and it definitely makes sense that these women warriors were strong and were powerful and were resilient and did fight for their tribe in a way that men are stereotypically supposed to. I actually thought it was a pretty empowering movie for women and if they make a woman as king too, you'll definitely see me in the theaters. My next opinion is the reason why people get called haters is because people don't like to be held accountable for the things that do need to be talked about and discussed. I just want to thank all of y'all for supporting my channel and encouraging me to continue to speak on this platform because the bigger I've become, the more BS comes with it. I decided to look myself up on Twitter a few weeks ago just out of pure curiosity and there were a few tweets of people just calling me a hater and all of these names without any context. And I was like, damn, like I didn't realize that I even had people that would discuss me outside of YouTube because I really just don't even see myself as this big content creator or influencer or anything like that. But I just had to realize that my platform is growing and I'm sure a lot of people have seen my content whether it was one time or they're a consistent watcher. And I think the reason why somebody like myself would get called a hater is because the average person is really not that smart. And I'm not trying to say that I'm just smarter than everybody, but the average person is really not that smart when you really think about life. You have to go to these spaces where these groups of people who have a little bit more natural intellect reside or just come together because not everybody has the capabilities to participate in conversations in which we're looking at all sides to whatever phenomenon we're discussing. I think I get called a hater because instead of allowing people to just be fickle minded and not think through all of their decisions and choices, I speak on every single outcome, both positive and negative to what is happening in the world. And I think it's not even me that's a hater or negative. I think the society that we live in is very negative and is leading people astray and does make people have increased variables of depression, low self-esteem, greed, pride, envy, sheepish mindsets, monkey see, monkey do mentality, and so forth. That is the society that we actually live in. And then there's a few of us that just like to talk about it, let alone call it out. And because I think I'm in the minority with the way how I think, it gets written off as being a hater. These comments really don't necessarily affect me. I just like to talk about it a lot because it's almost like throwing it back at the people who just talk shit for no reason because they think that they could just talk shit until I talk shit. Girl, I'm gonna address you and yeah, I saw what you said, babe, okay? But nonetheless, I think the reason why people who like to talk about things in its entirety and speak on the realities of every nuance of society right now get called haters is because the average person has a clouded mentality and is conditioned to fall in line and be this factory 
luxury style way of life versus actually thinking about the choices that they make and how it can affect themselves and everyone around them. My next opinion is I think making a social media account for your child and pretending to be them, especially when your child is like a newborn, is not only a risky move as a parent, but it also kind of gives me a little bit of delusion. Take it from somebody who makes the majority of their money from social media. This is not a place that you want your child to be active and vulnerable. All social media accounts for children under the age of 18 should be monitored by the parents. I know maybe five or 10 years ago, it wasn't as serious because the internet seemed like a place where if you say that you are private, then you're private. But from my experience over the years, I've realized that there are way too many predators on the internet. There are a lot of young people who are way too gullible. And I also feel that inappropriate content is at an all time high on the internet that children shouldn't have their own pages that are ran by their parents in disguise of them. It sends the wrong message to the wrong people. And I think if you're trying to get your child brand deals, it's better perceived when it's being posted through your own account. For example, I saw that DJ Khaled made an Instagram page for his second son who I don't even know how old the baby is, but he's definitely under three. And he was speaking as if it was him and posting on the account from a first person standpoint. And I'm just like, to be somebody who is filthy stinking rich, very well known, very respected and represented in the industry and has more resources to understand how grimy it can get on here. Why on earth would you subject your child to that? I know everybody just thinks social media is just all fun and games. And for me, it's not because it really just is a job for me. The personal aspect of it is kind of not as prevalent as the business side for me. But you have to just be careful because outside of the predatorial aspect, you're basically forcing your child to be exposed to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people before they ever even know how to say their first name. And I was watching the show Teen Mom the other day and it just hit me like, damn, these kids literally have their whole entire lives documented on TV from the day that they were born to the point where anybody can go back and see different things they have done from age zero up until now. And as a parent, I just feel like you should be way more protective of your child in social media because social media to me as somebody who does it as a job is not a nice place. You're subjecting your child to unnecessary ridicule, judgment, and predators that are really sickos. And I just feel like it's just best to keep your toddlers and elementary school age children off of the internet for as long as you can. There's no reason that a grown adult should be speaking on behalf of a baby for the social media user's entertainment. My next opinion is there is definitely an attack on women, like a huge attack on being a woman, calling yourself a woman, what it means to be in women's spaces. Just the entire idea of being a woman is under attack. And I'm actually going to be doing a separate video on this and it will be posted only to my Patreon because I'm going to get real. I'm going to say things that are not going to make people happy. But I definitely think that when you look at certain things that have happened in society over the years, it seems like there's just this direct focus on women, our reproductive process, the idea of cisgender versus transgender, the idea of a period or a menstruation cycle being up for debate. In addition to, I believe it was the brand Always or Tampax that removed the female symbol from their boxes to make their brand more inclusive to everyone. And I think that one was actually very offensive and very preposterous. Like you can't have a menstrual cycle without having a uterus. And if you're not born with one, I don't understand the yearning for one, let alone wanting to experience a menstruation cycle. Nothing about that is desirable. It's literally painful, messy, and throws off your entire body for like a week. So who would really wanna go through that voluntarily? No one, not even real women. So I do think that there is an attack on women. And the reason why I think that there is is because a lot of men have realized that women have been able to break a lot of barriers within, let's just say the 21st century. From the amount of money we can earn to us playing the same games that men do, to the fact that women actually do have to get up and work, to the fact that even women in sports is being recognized more than ever, even as far as entertainment like rap, female rap is really big right now. I think we are in the era of women finally getting similar recognition for things that are either traditionally done by men or just things that pertain to women only. And I think it does upset a lot of men and not in a way in which they are directly against women, but for some men, it does grind their gears that women have been the focus of a lot of different things for like the last decade or so. And the best way to counteract that, because I guess this is considered against the status quo, is to find ways to hinder our rights, control our bodies, dictate different women-based experiences with others and kind of telling us to take what we are being given versus demand the things that we deserve. I'm very interested to see how this goes because women have been overriding a lot of things or at least just infiltrating a lot of spaces and the response to it has definitely been an attack on women. My final opinion is there are way too many underrated dark-skinned female music artists that don't get enough recognition and I wanted to take the time to give them some of their credit or just maybe introduce some of y'all to other artists who 
aren't as mainstream because I think colorism is very much super prevalent in society and specifically the entertainment industry. I feel like Tink is completely underrated. I was getting my hair done the other day and my stylist had some of her songs playing and I'm like, wow, why have I never paid attention to her artistry and given her recognition? Her songs are really good and I think her look is actually very striking. She's a beautiful woman and the fact that she doesn't really get as much relevance nor credit is very crazy. Same thing goes for Coco Jones. I'm glad that she's really been getting a lot more recognition for her song I See You because she deserves it. This is a girl who has a lot of natural talent, also experienced in the industry through Disney, but we don't get to hear her name as big as some other artists when I think she is just as up there as anybody else. Another person is Normani and we've talked about Normani and how she just doesn't have the best team behind her to give her that push into mainstream and it could be more to it. I'm sure y'all will tell me in the comment section below, but I feel like for what it is, they don't get that much recognition in the R&B lane, and I'm not sure why. Like, I could say it's colorism, and I think that's definitely a part of it, but then we also have artists such as Summer Walker and SZA, who to me are probably the best R&B artists out right now. But then when you compare the performance aspect to somebody like Mariah the Scientist, it's like, okay, there's that debate of colorism. I even think Queen Nyjah is a really good R&B artist. I think she has great talent, and of course her YouTube popularity was a lot of the backing into pushing pushing her into the mainstream as an artist, but I feel like Queen has been a little bit MIA and she still has a lot more brand recognition or at least visibility in comparison to Tink or Coco Jones or Normani. On the female rapper end, I feel like Dreezy doesn't get enough credit for how good she is. I would like to say that she's probably top 10 female rappers and I'm not sure why she hasn't gotten that much push. I'll also throw in Amaretta out of ATL in the conversation. That girl can rap her tail off and I find it interesting that the only time that she got some big recognition was when people thought her and Lotto were beefing, but they ended up coming out with a collaborative record together, which definitely was a banger. I'll even throw in Ken The Man as the third underrated female rapper because yes, she was on the XSL freshman list last year, which brought her a lot more recognition, but I feel like she definitely could be way bigger than what she is. And I feel like she's gotten a little bit more buzz, especially since after being on that list because I've been hearing and seeing her songs a lot more, but sometimes I feel like it's just because I actually pay attention to female rap more than the average person especially now so maybe that's why I see her and I'll also throw in Callie I feel like Callie definitely blew up in 2020 with her song mm -mm. and so of course she has other songs that are popular especially on TikTok but I feel like there wasn't like a follow-up big single to that song the song ended up being remixed of course but I would have just thought that she would be a little bit more visible than what she is I know she has a new song out and it's literally really popular on TikTok so there is more potential there but there's just so many artists that I feel like could be just as mainstream as the next girl and the common denominator is their skin shade. Of course, there's exceptions in mainstream such as Meg Thee Stallion or Young Miami and JT, but that's like few and far between with the girls who have a lot of talent who could be in the same spaces as them. It could come down to management. It could come down to the team that they have behind them. It could come down to all of that, but I still feel like colorism plays a role because of course we have these conversations now about it, but I think it makes people say, okay, we'll just give a few dark skinned artists to be recognized more than there used to be, but we will still have some girls on the back burner or riding the bench until we want them to blow up. But then you literally have a lot more mediocre talent from girls who aren't monoracial black girls or even black passing. And then it makes me question the entire industry as well as the consumers. I will always say that I do think there's been a lot more recognition of brown and dark skinned women over the last few years, but I still feel like we're trying to get over this mountain of not being recognized, especially in the entertainment industry. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. What do you think? What do you know? Let me know. If you haven't already, go stream my song Ceremony. It is out now. Link is down below. Make sure y'all click on it and go run it up for me. We going for song of the summer. And lastly, don't forget to follow me on all of my social media networks and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all.